Welcome to this presentation on seeing beyond the dental box. I'm going to go over uh, an exciting new frontier in dentistry. Uh, uh, and you'll get to see the rewards, growth revenues, and the rejuvenations. So let's start out with the case of Dr. Susan. Um, she started out on the left image here, and nine months later, she looks like this. It's not orthodontics. This is called clinical epigenetics, right? So uh, we have Dr. Kristen Lewis who just joined us. Hello, Dr. Kristen. I know you're muted, but I just want to say hi. Um, so uh, this is nine months, okay? It's not orthodontics. It's not um, veneers. She has the same teeth, but her symptoms are listed here. Those are the major ones. So I'm excited to share with you um, this uh, transformation that's called clinical epigenetics. So, <clears throat> We are empowered to do this by no less than U.S. Surgeon General, uh, who said that uh, way back in 2000, that oral health is more than healthy teeth. Okay, so Dr. Susan, if we were to look inside, she's got gorgeous veneers, right? Uh, you can't knock that. Uh, the craftsmanship is just incredible. But then why is she miserable with all those symptoms here? severe hip pain, poor sleep, acid reflux, nightmares, and aches and pains and sugar cravings. All right. I am here to share with you that um, actually there is a huge, almost all of it is from her oral contributions. All right. There's nothing wrong with the veneers. It's a question of why does she need the ears in the first place? So I'm here to help you get out of the dental box where we see just the two rows of teeth. Not your fault, not anybody else's, except that's how our profession has, has evolved and that's how we're conditioned by our dental surgeon. I'm gonna to try to slowly expand you into the leading edge frontier where you go from here to here to here to here and then you'll see the whole person. And you'll see how the mouth influences the entire whole body type. So one of my mentors, Dr. Rich Beisel, said, you can't diagnose what you don't know, right? So what do we need to know about this mouth that led to these symptoms? And from there, that this transformation that you're seeing. Okay. So what we did was to figure out what's wrong with her jaws using this uh, analysis called 3D jaw diagnostic. This is the SUNY plus cephalometrics. This is model analysis. It turns out that Dr. Kane had very, very good airway, okay? So why did she have all those problems? Well, I'll let her tell you. Uh, we gave her a construction bite like this in class and immediately her pain went away in 20 minutes. From there, we built her this appliance. She got this appliance in class during AMD training, and I'll, I'll let her do the talking. So I just want to tell you about this appliance because it's really been something spectacular for me right off the bat. I've always been the type of person that is super active, um, athletic and a ballet dancer, but there came a point a couple of years ago where I started to really notice that I had a lot of pain in my left side, my back that would shoot down my leg. And it started to, a lot of symptoms would come up where I was noticing I couldn't do a lot of the things that I enjoyed doing. I would be walking down the you know, road with my dogs and I literally had to stop on the side of the street and hit the floor in the middle of you know, a walk. And I, 
I would just sit there in pain until it kind of resolved, stretched it out and got back up again. I will tell you that I went to Dr. Liao's seminar because I was hoping that this could be an answer for me. So he delivers my appliance. My symptoms were like seriously diminished. I did not have pain. I could walk all through the square. I really wasn't sure what to make of it. But the next day I knew I was going to fly out of that airport again. And I thought, oh no, I'm going to be going to that airport. I wore the appliance with me through the airport. And when the escalator was too blocked, I felt strong enough to take my luggage and climb the stairs through that airport. And I couldn't believe it when I got to the top of the stairs that I had done what I had did because I felt like that's how I used to be. That was me. That was how I have always been in my life that I could climb any stairs I wanted to and through an airport. And here I was again, like, hello, I remember myself again. That's me. And well, you get the idea. All right. So the secret sauce is this start this medium and the principles that I'm going to show you shortly. And so long story bit made very short, fast forward. Um, I think this is 12 months. You went from here to here, from here to here, same set of veneers. We didn't change anything restoratively. Okay. This is not dental. So this is subjective units of distress. It's a validated research tool. It basically uses a scale of zero to 10, with the 10 being it bugs you to death. He's like a drug, drug addict, you just gotta get a fix. Zero is nothing, right? So at the start, she had all these symptoms here. And the maximum is 10, and she came in at 7. Well, nine months later, it went down to 11. Her subjective units of distress. Right? So that translates into an 84% improvement because when you subtract 11 from 70, you get 59. If I 59 into 70, that's 84%. All right. So this is what it looks like in the mouth, outside the mouth, and I'll let her give the update. Okay. We're hiking the um, falls at the end of the road to Hana. And we've been hiking now for about you know, 40 minutes or so. And it's pretty rough terrain. And I would say that a year ago, before I started wearing my appliance, I could not do this. I would be afraid to even go 10 minutes into this hike. Um, it's very uneven. There's mud. And I have absolutely no hip pain. And I attribute it all, really, to my oral appliance, my Thrive appliance that balanced my jaws and created a situation where my body was in alignment. It really has changed my life. Just wanted to kind of you to be with me on this journey because it has opened up my life again to be the best of me. Thank you. All right. So what happened there? Right? What happened was there is a gene expression that brought out the better version of her that's already in her double helix DNA. All right, you said a lot there. So don't worry if you didn't get it the first time. Um, we will show you more examples of this, okay? So here's another dentist, Dr. Sylvia from Canada. She started out looking like this, and here she is 12 months later. So this is not an isolated incident. This is not particular as somebody who, you know, just took some secret remedy and they got transformed. No, this is universally applicable to everybody if you make the right diagnosis, all right? So what's wrong with her? Well, she says, I'm living in paramount syndrome right now, 
right? So in her case, um, she has severe chronic TMD. She has done lots of chiropractic work, acupuncture, massage, and even trigger point injections. She's got fatigue, typical poor posture of a dentist, restrictive airway, and, and teeth white. All right, so what does straight white teeth got to do with all of these symptoms? This is not a dental problem, as I tried to say before. Okay, so we gave her this appliance just like we did with Dr. Susan, and we put all our my patients who was on this appliance with a bone building diet. This is a green smoothie, this is bone broth. We'll go over that later. But I want to show you the neck result. That's what matters. That's why dentists come to, I mean, patients come to see doctors, okay? So Dr. Sylvia came, started out with uh, these symptoms. That is both medical and dental in nature. Sorry. Uh, jaw pain, sleep quality, white hip clicking, right? Mouth breathing, headaches, back pain, daytime sleepiness, brain fog, poor digestion. It's not just teeth. However, if you understand this thing called paramount syndrome, uh, you will see that it has a systemic ripple effect. That can result in something like these that you're seeing now. Fast forward 10 weeks, okay? That's two and a half months. She improved 81%. Remember, Dr. Susan went 84%. Okay. So um, look at the, the progress here. Everything improved across the board. Jaw pain, 82, sleep quality, 84. She's got two little kids. That's why it's not better. Right hip clicking, six to one. Mouth breathing, 86. Headache, six to two. Poor digestion, even improved. Okay, brain fog improved. Daytime sleepiness improved. All right, everything went like right hip clicking. Oral plant took her from six to zero. Figure that, okay? So there's a systemic contribution to the mouth structure. So this is the idea that I want to get across to you with these first two cases, All right? So Newton's discovery of the apple uh, falling downward as a result of gravity eventually led to space travel. I coined this term called Paramount Syndrome in 2017, and this is new to dentists and medical doctors worldwide, okay? So, the big problem is because we have the tongue as a six foot tiger in between two jaws that offer the three foot cage. All right, so the net result is that you have a choked airway and you have a misaligned neck spine. That creates all kinds of problems that I call impairment syndrome. So let's get a deeper dive. The mouth is to humans what roots are to plants. We get our energy and vitality from the mouth, okay? So I define a holistic mouth as one that is structurally fit and sensibly used to support whole body health with these functions. Physiology, alignment, breathing, circulation, digestion, energy, and sleep. When these functions work, the body will thrive. When they don't, well, you're going to have impaired mouth syndrome, okay? That is a many predictable medical, dental, and mood symptoms from underdeveloped jobs. I just had to let a couple of people in here. So once you understand this, all right, let's, we can't cover everything, so we're just going to cover basically alignment, breathing, and sleep. So what does it look like clinically? Well, these kind of patients are in dental offices everywhere around the world, not just in the US, okay? So we have patients who, who need a lot of dental work, one dental trouble after another, okay? They have all kinds of pains that we just kind of dismiss as dentists and say, well, it's not dental, so we'll see the chiropractor. Go see the neurologist. 
go see the foot doctor, go see the GI doctor, okay? Go to the pharmacist. Now we start to look more, all right? Does she have a six foot tiger in a three foot cage? Well, here's her top, okay? The most leading edge thinking now says, the tongue is now a respiratory organ. How's that? Hmm? I mean, as we saw a dentist, the tongue is a nuisance, right? We have to retract that in order to make crowns. Do restorative procedures, right? But in fact, this is a seriously flawed what? Respiratory organ. So I came up early on in my venture into this new frontier. Uh, I noticed that a lot of people with airway problems in profile, they have a upper lip that drops straight down. Or worse yet, it curls inward. So it's a sign, a clue, not yet a law, okay? So whenever you see this, you can suspect that the airways are compressed in the AP direction. So think of the mouth as an accordion, right? The accordion could be stretched all the way to genetic potential in all three dimensions, depth, height, and width. What happens when it fails to grow fully? Well, you have this problem. You have a size six tongue, you have a size three mouth. And so now the oxygen pipeline is compromised. Well, we have evidence of this from Dr. Singh's uh, research with the University of Malaysia Dental School. They measure the maxilla and mandible uh, width of the OSA patient. They found that seven to 10% narrower in the arches of the uh, OSA patients. Well, why are we doing veneers? Because teeth are crowded, right? Well, we're missing this. Now, this also tells us that CPAP has a oral appliance alternative. We can use appliances to regrow jaw bones. All right, so we can manage symptoms or you can treat root cause or you can do both. So here's an example of a patient who's got Leo sign, airway in trouble when it's past the yellow zone. Uh, going to the red and black zone, they're in trouble. Maxilla is too small for the mandible. And I tell the patient, the supplementary tracing is just like an architectural blueprint for this region. What's off where and how much I think that. So we use this data to design the appliance and this is what it looks like in the mouth. And this is what the patient tells us when they come back. Uh, he has a CPAP, but he says this device working here, I'll just type it out for you. The device does not disrupt my sleep at all, but my CPAP does. And since I started using the device, I've started having nightly dreams. That means what? We're asleep. All right. So his CPAP provides a nightly sleep test, monitoring his AHI. Well, this whole month of May, when his FAA license is up for renewal as a pilot. Uh, it reports that uh, the, for the whole month, AHI is 2.3, well under five. Okay, there's events per hour over the whole month. So four and five. Okay, for two nights there, he's high, but on average for the month, he's fit to fly. Okay. So, your facial structure has everything to do with your air. And two thirds of your facial structure is your jaws. What's the difference between these two? Besides that the one on the right is the lead actress and this one is the character actress. Well, she's got the outside big time, right? 
her maxilla failed to thrive during her growth years. Here's another patient. High blood pressure, OSA, brain fog. This is her tongue. That's her airway. There's the outside. Here's the next patient, 66 years old, just lost her husband, just got diagnosed with breast cancer, just found out that she has impaired mouse syndrome. You think they're connected? You bet. Why? She had bicuspid obstruction. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> uh, and look at this deviated to the right on open. And just for me to take a photo. So they, I noticed that she's got a right TMJ. Okay. So this is an airway that is not serving her health. And this airway is the result of her jaw structure and she's being thrown to the dentist at 66 years old all her life. And it's not what dental school trained us. This is a brand new frontier and it's nobody's fault. But the awareness, the science, and the know-how is here. Okay, so impaired mouth syndrome is the result of deficient oral structures contributing to a diverse set of medical, dental, mental, and mood symptoms. Almost always, if you have an impaired mouth, you'll end up with bruxing, clenching, unnecessary root canal, TMJ, uh, whatever you want to mention in dentistry, most of it is connected to impaired mouth syndrome. Pain throughout the whole body. I used to think that, well, you've had that pain, that's chiropractor pain. You got back pain, that's orthopedic surgeon's problem. Not anymore. How about fatigue and hypoxia? Well, that makes sense, right? If you're <laughs> short on oxygen, you are going to feel pain. You don't have day pass. But here's what I know now. And thank you for coming to the, the this presentation. Because if you restore in paramount, you will empower full body health for yourself, for your family members, and for all your patients, current and future. So how many of you have neck, shoulder, and back pain? Well, not only because you're occupational hazard as a dentist, you have to bend over a patient for a living, but also because maybe your head is not mounted correctly on the neck as a kid, and we're just not trained to pick that up. This is the trapezius muscle, and uh, all the pains in the head, Dr. Janet Travell, the physician for uh, uh, President Kennedy, famously said that all the pains in the head and face and jaw originate from the trapezius muscle. The trapezius muscle is to balance the head so that it's centered over the shoulders. This is a problem. This is gonna create trapezius pain. This is gonna worsen your patient's dental sensitivity. So I created this term called Masa access, that stands for mouth, airway, sleep, alignment. You know, NASA, right? Well, this is Masa, okay? So the whole body physiology operates around this Masa access. If you don't have this, uh, your patient is on a downhill spiral. That includes their teeth, that includes their veneers, that includes their implants, that includes their perio, and their gingiva, and TMJ. So we live in a field of gravity 24 7. And guess what? <laughs> That's why we need a square and level structure to resist gravity, because it never stops pulling us toward the grid. And part of this level and square structure involves a level head and the level of fusel plane. Here's a patient of mine who had midlines off by about two millimeters. And I did what my chiropractor did, check her leg length, 
I put my thumbs over the balls of her ankle, medium and evil line. And when I put the appliance in, her bed lines are dead on, and so are her legs. This is instantaneous. They share the same physical address, the teeth and the feet. Main line off and even like one. In between, you don't have neck, shoulder, back end. This is evidence, this is experimental evidence from Japan. They took three beagle dogs, took them to the OR under anesthesia, high speed handpiece, flattened the lower right occlusal surface so that when the dog woke up, it only occludes on the left side. And now the dog went lame on the left because the right side is not articulated. Well, what that says is that the trigeminal nerves influence is not just around here. It goes all the way down to the feet. And here we have another dentist who in his first session with AMD training, Recorded this on day two. Hello, I'm Dr. Hal Stewart. I have a dental practice and teaching center in Flowerbone, Texas. We're about 25 miles north of Dallas. I'm in the process of going through uh, the AMD training with Dr. Liao. It's been fantastic. When I through when I went through uh, AMD A, we hosted it here at our teaching center at the office, the Stewart Center. And that weekend, Dr. Liao took a, a construction bite on me using the pinky test bite and uh, the, the pinky construction bite. And uh, I took my bite registration home that night and slept in it. You know, I've had uh, chronic um, uh, sciatica pain in my left, lower left back for about four or five years now. Uh, it it's mainly bothers me when I first get up in the morning. The morning I woke up with my construction bite, uh, one all night, uh, it was very comfortable. One of the first things I noticed is the pain was not completely gone, but it was 75 to 80% better. Um, and so I was like, wow, that's pretty cool, you know? So when a second night with it and same thing, you know, not gone completely, but definitely markedly bare. So there was definitely an oral connection, you know, to my sciatica. Maybe that's not the only cause, but definitely an oral connection. And that really opened my eyes and that there's so many things that we can do in here um, with the, you know, the, the throb of quiets um, and, you know, nasal breathing and malfunctional therapy that has an effect on the rest of the body. So um, I'm just uh, amazed at what we can do with this uh, type of therapy using these appliances and using our knowledge. Okay, so you get the idea. This is a new frontier in dentistry, right? So what I want to share with you is this. Your impaired mouth syndrome will disrupt your whole body health and your patients just like Cody. The only difference is that nobody's ever recognized how big the mouth is to the patient's whole body and how disruptive it is, especially in bicuspid extraction cases, right? So those of you who came in late, um, you can type your uh, questions into the chat box and just reference the slide number here on the um, thumbnail of it, okay? So next case, midline's way off, why? Well, you'll see shortly, but she came in with hip and back pain. All right, just to show the connection between this and real life dental patients. So when I look, she's got one entire lower incisors discrepancy in her midline because of this cross -bite. This is outstanding restorative dentistry. But the cusp and fossa anatomy locked in and perpetuated this midline shift. Two years later, she ended up with hip pain and back. It got so bad she could not sleep through the night. Okay. 
I only slept in two hour chunks. Hip pain wakes me up. Right. Well, what's the proof of the pudding? If you put this in and her hip pain gets better, then there is a connection, right? Well, here's what she said. Hip, hip, hooray, zero ache in the night last night. So good. So the connections are real, just so nobody's gone there before. All right, so I know you're all dying to think, well, what is this appliance? I'm telling you the appliance is not the main thing. The appliance is an assist. But the more important thing is the physiology, okay? So my appliance is trademark for as an orthopedic device. Notice that I don't claim to treat OSA as a medical condition. This protect you to stay within the scope of your dental license. So you're not at risk legally for treating oral contribution to anything and everything including OSA and low back pain. And I never touched this patient's hip once. I never even went below her shoulders. And yet I can make this kind of a difference, okay? Because of physiology, because of anatomy. This is what it looks like when they come back from the lab. You can see that the edges are just practically touching as the new appliance. And later on, you'll see that the edges will expand and open up and reduce gears turn. Okay. Here's the important concept. Okay. Epigenetics, here's a formal definition from CDC, is the study of how behaviors and environment affect how genes work. There you have it. Short, concise, to the point. Now, we have an opportunity to control just these two things, oral behavior and oral environment. So I change the oral behavior with a bone building diet to replace standard American trash diet. And guess what? Nasal obstruction. With the advent of CBCT, we're able to see that, you know, why patients are snoring, we can see why patients have sinus headaches. We can see why they have chapped lips and their mouth breathers and gingival problems as a result of it. Black is air, gray is tissue. Here, there's a very healthy ratio of black and gray because now we have patent oxygen correlate. Here, you have sinus membrane, you have cloudiness, and you have way more congestion than you have oxygen core. Okay. This is not even the worst case I see. Right? So I'm just picking an average case. Okay, this is what fast food drive through convenience food do. So this is what we teach in our training, okay? Success requires you know how to diagnose what's all fair and how much, how to take a construction bite that meets a certain criteria, they eat a bone building diet, and of course the patient complies. Okay. They knew they need to wear this from sunset to sunrise. If they do that, you can see how wide this is long. Okay. And so this means what? The gap opened up by this appliance needs to be filled in with some. If you don't put the patient on a bone building diet and correct oral behavior and lifestyle behavior and uh, teach them how to breathe through their nose. Okay, you're not gonna get the result. There's a physician, bought herself a lovely set of reconstructed teeth because of a severe acid reflux that eroded all her lower posterior teeth. After that, she still had a lot of symptoms. And so she got talked into jaw surgery. And then she reached out to me after doing her research and reading six foot tiger three foot cage. So she came in with 11 symptoms. Maximal score on a scale of zero to 10 is 110. 
He came in at 99. Here's a physician, okay? He's got chronic migraine, anxiety, teeth grinding, you know, you can see all, all the pains up and down the postural chain, brain fog. You, mean, you don't want your surgeon to have brain fog, right? She had to cut back on her work schedule. Well, here's four months, 10 to one, eight to five, 10 to two, nine to two. You can see it, back pain, eight to one, jaw pain, 10 to two, okay? Everything improved so that four months later, she's at 70% improvement. No drills, no surgery, no drugs, no shots. So let's stop for a moment and just ask a question. What is it that your patient comes to you? Legal term for this is called consideration. What is the consideration when they pay you for professional services rendered? What's the exchange? I'm sorry, this is not a put down. This is meant to be descriptive. I call it trinket dentistry, okay? Fillings, veneers, implants, brackets, wires, trays. That's what we did is traffic. AMD is traffic and clinical epigenetics to restore impaired mouth, airway, sleep alignment. And when you do that, this is the result. She came to me about 10 years ago, looking like this. She said, I've run through my night guard, can you give me another one? I looked at this and I said, what happened? Her braces came off four years earlier. Okay. So remember the CDC definition, and I told her about Dr. Singh's groundbreaking research that you can widen the airway 58% using a maxillary appliance. Mandibular advancement does not grow the airway. You take it out and the patient has the same airway. Besides, you're wearing for eight hours a night. What happened to the other 14 hours, 16 hours? You still have the same data. All right, so we did our homework. We found out her maxilla was too small. That's why she relapsed, and that's why she ended up with the anterior open back. We did our homework. I figured out that her maxilla was intruded, and therefore her mandible was intruded, and therefore her air was choked, and that's why she had to thrust her tongue in order to fight its way out of Alcatraz. So how I restore this is to figure out that this is too narrow transversely in the accordion analogy I told you earlier, the transverse is too narrow and the AP is squashed. That's where I need to go. So I did this, talked to her about nutrition. This is the most expensive egg I can find in Whole Foods. This is a backyard hen. You tell me which one is your turn. So with this appliance, we took her from here to here, and you can see her facial effect completely changed. We don't have time to play that video, but I just want to show you the difference in the objective evidence that is her airway. For her airway volume, we tripled it. For her minimal cross-sectional area, follow my cursor, that's where, um, Airway collapses and apnea happens. Minimal cross-sectional area went from 120 to 276. That's 2.3 times. And you widen the three-foot cage where it's deficient earlier, the airway increases. Okay. You can do this at any age as long as the patient has healthy, sound, natural teeth. Could be restored, just not in place. All right, so this is three years after genetics. 
I kept looking at this 10 years ago and I said, what happened here? Uh, is there something that we can use to apply to everybody else? And the answer is yes. Well, I took epigenetics clinical from academic research. She ended up looking like this and got recruited to um, to become a part-time model. He publishes a uh, case report. And here's what I really want to, with the help of Dr. Singh, here's what I really want to call your attention to. Okay? Evidence that suggests that sleep bruxism is centrally regulated and that the highest risk factor associated with sleep bruxism is OSA. This means what? When we see teeth grinding, we should not think night garden. We should think airway. Bruxing is a compensation for choked airway. Right? So teeth grinding is just one frame in the movie. All we get to see is just that one frame. And we miss the rest of them. There's a bigger picture for whole body health and physiology. So in that context, teeth grinding is just one frame of movie. The title of the movie is Airway Obstruction During Sleep. The evidence for that is here. When you're grinding, you're not sleeping. You have micro arousal. Okay. And when they fully titrate this airway obstruction by forcing pressure air through this choke zone, there's complete eradication of teeth grinding. So the problem is the three foot cage. It's also sometimes the oversized tongue. But whenever the jaw didn't grow enough, you're going to have a choked airway. Conversely, whenever you choke, you have a choked airway and you have hypoxia symptoms, you need to look to see if there's a three-foot cage from underdevelopment of the jaws. So when patients lose a natural teeth, you can rub your hands together and say, oh, we're going to do an implant. What happens when the implant fails, like this one? What are you gonna do now? And what happens when a patient has a mouthful of dentistry done and one after another keep failing because the airway looks like this? So, how much money do you think this patient has put into her mouth? And now you're going to have to replace that because now the movie is called Airway Obstruction During Sleep. And the biggest enemy for implant failure is what? Proxy and hypoxia. So there's a study that shows that um, one dentist doing about 10,000 um, uh, implants, so there's no operator variable there. We found that the failure rate of implants in Bruxers is 3.3 times higher than non-Bruxers. Non-Bruxers stands at 4.6, Bruxers 15. The hazard ratio is 3 times. Okay? So I have a very simple formula. A, B, C before D. That means alignment, breathing, circulation before dentistry. We need to look through this before we start doing this. All right. When you see this, start thinking, bruxing, start thinking, uh, airway, and don't just blame the patient for poor hygiene. Here's the same patient. 67 years old. Look at the lips and the cheekbones. Okay, so 
this was one of my one of my earliest cases. And uh, right now we don't do braces anymore. But in those days we still did. And when we got done with the orthopedic part, the appliance part, all her symptoms went away except that she's got a tilted head. Well, this is not the time to do your restorative dentistry. This is what we mean by whole health. This is what AMDs do. So I sent her to physical therapist, and guess what? She came back level and square, perfectly able to resist gravity. Okay? Now she's ready for dental reconstruction. This is what I mean by massa access restore. Mouth, airway, sleep, alignment. With this, look at her. She is now 69 years old. So we need a different type of dentist. There's nothing wrong with being a great restorative dentist. Don't get me wrong. This is not a put down with traditional dentistry. But we're trying to see what beyond the traditional dental box that comes with some limitations built in. One of them is we can't explain why bone loss, why tooth loss, why tooth loss, and why implant loss. Why the bone around the implant takes it down. Why do patients have persistent sensitivity? Why do the gum recede? Why is there app fractions? Why do some root canal kill the patient? Right? There are some limitations to that. I mean, that create business opportunity, sure. But what if you were the patient? All right. So the new breed of that is called airway mouth doctors. We fix and pair mouth, airway, sleep, along with massa axis. Okay, now we'll treat pain, keep grinding, all of these things. Grumpy, irritable. You ever have patients who are rude to your friend desk? Yeah, they need airway help. All right. So here comes a patient who says, My head and neck feel disconnected. Guess what? This is bicuspid extraction case. Okay. And the maxilla is way too small for her mandible. This represents a discrepancy relative to ideal. And here it represents normal. Okay. So he came in with a whole bunch of symptoms, sorry. Okay, well, a whole bunch of complaints. I mean, I don't even have room to write in all the all the uh, uh, issues that he came in with. But suffice to say, the patient in his own words says, my head and neck feel disconnected. What's in between the head and the neck like the jaws? And sure enough, you look in the, in the mouth, it's by cut to the extraction. All right, so we did our homework. Gave her this appliance. So we start from top left, counterclockwise. Here's pre-treatment, pre-treatment. We did this, and here's one and a half years later. What's the difference between these two? Well, the mandible is out of end trap, and the incisors are in what's called class one incisor relationship, and more importantly, the main lines are in. Okay, so we have some ways to go because it's such a severe outlier case. So here's a progress tracker. Loss of sensation in the abdomen. Week 73, that's roughly a year and a half, 18 months. So loss of sensation in the abdomen, 10 to 3. Loss of sensation in the spine, arms and legs, 10 to 0. Head, neck, shoulder pain, 10 to 3. Severe headaches, 10 to 1. Well, you get the idea. So when we add all this up, we throw out tinnitus. Okay, so here's an example of where the oral plan didn't change anything. So there's no oral contribution. We're not gods. We're dentists. We're licensed to treat and diagnose jobs. Okay? So this does not have an oral contribution. So if we throw tinnitus out, his total score went from 80 to 15. 
that's an 81% gain. No pain, no drug, no diet. I mean, way lost diet. Okay. No sweat in the gym floor, no braces. 80%. These are outlier symptoms. Which medical doctor can achieve this kind of result? No one. Right. And this is a um, dentist who reached out to me during the pandemic. And uh, we mentor her uh, across the Atlantic. And uh, uh, <laughs> I haven't met her in person yet, but uh, this is doable by anybody, okay? So here we are. Well, hello, Dr. Catherine. How's it going in London? Hi, Dr. Lau. Happy Easter from London. <laughs> Going fantastically. Thank you very much. Good, good. <laughs> um, so I am going to give you a little update on my patient, Dr. Uh, Mr. Atwell, who I started seeing almost a year ago now. Uh, we yeah, yeah. started him on his starter appliances. Um, so he has been making incredible progress as recorded. Really? Tell us, tell us, tell us, good help. So he started off when he was seeing me, his main complaints were that he had absolutely no feeling from his neck to his hips. So he couldn't feel digestion, his stomach, he couldn't feel feeling hungry, feeling full. Um, he had lots of weakness in his body. So he was unable to, exam for example, to push himself up out of a chair using his hands. Um, he had strange pains in his um in his neck um yeah um and difficult great difficulty with any mo movement of really his entire body i mean he was able to function but he didn't have a normal range of movement so immediately once he started wearing the device he's just started to feel an improvement in the pain in the back of his head and neck um, and very, very, very quickly, he started to feel like his body is moving into alignment. Now, he described his stomach as a big bloated sack at the beginning. Um, and again, very quickly felt he was, uh, the bloating was less, he was losing weight. Um, now he very early on also noticed some more unusual i would say symptom or improvement so he noticed his eyesight improving um uh -huh. yeah and <laughs> um, he had some lumps and bumps in certain areas of his body which he's noticed very quickly started to go down and actually now almost a year later have completely disappeared really? um, wow all right so you get the idea right in the interest of time, I won't play the whole video, but the, the point that keeps coming up in Dr. Eustace's report is very, very, very quickly. Okay, once you restore massa access with that construction by, you've seen in every case here, uh, in video testimonials, they get better right away. So think about how many of your patients, this is like chair side investigation, okay? Think about how many of your patients have been paramount syndrome waiting for diagnosis, right? How many of your patients every week comes in with crowded lower front teeth, uh, with uh, teeth grinding, that fraction, TMJ, chronic pains in your head, neck, shoulder, back, hands, Bicuspid extraction cases, right? Snoring, CPAP, brain fog, depression, anxiety, irritability. I tell my patient, look, your symptom is my challenge. If it's beyond my scope of practice, I'll help you find an answer. That's what the patient come to us for. If there's an oral contribution, I'll help you find out and I'll offer you a solution. And how about teeth grinding patients? How many of your, what percentage of your patients grind their teeth? Well, I polled enough dentists to know that 
the good diagnosticians will say 90% and the average diagnostician will say about 60%. You can tell where you are in that range. But they don't just grind their teeth. They wake up tired, they have morning headaches, they have other symptoms called impairment syndrome, right? They have fatigue, they have aches and pains, they have TMJ very often, they have anxiety, depression, brain fog, poor memory, high blood pressure, and multiple denoma. It's called a syndrome, a collection of symptoms connected to a condition. All right, so patients want natural pain. I'm pretty sure you do too. Okay? And there are no shortage of patients. This is a newly trained AMD, okay? <laughs> she found this many cases the first week back. Each one of these cases, it's about $800 in diagnostic records. Here's a dentist, Dr. Jen White. This is her drawer. This is her finger. To the left are cases that have started. To the right are cases that have done the records but have not started treatment yet. He said these two also should have gone into this box. All right, you can see that the patient is hungry. You can see that the patients are wanting this. Here are a couple of examples. Like, okay, how much is the case worth? I charge according to case complexity. Bicuspid extracting cases are different than orthodontic relapse in a teenager. Okay. Um, you have patients like this every day of the week. Great white, clean, blue, and yet they have a bunch of problems. Don't just send them home for a six month checkup. Connect these dots. Connect these dots for them and ask the question, is there an oral contribution to these symptoms? Because when you are able to connect the dots and offer them the solution, they'll want to buy. This is about an average case fee for me, okay? This dentist went back, uh, Dr. Maria Dwyer in North Dakota, started 51 cases in two months. 51. You think the patients are not hungry for this? Here's Dr. Jeff Yali. Uh, her assistant, by the way, we, we recommend that you at least bring a airway treatment coordinator, a general assistant who is trained with you at the same time. They had a 10x return on their AMD trained intuition in 10 months. What this means is that when you put off your training, you're losing money. Money that is waiting, patients are wanting to spend in order to get well. This is Dr. Kristen Lewis's case. She's, she spent her birthday in my classroom. Are you there, Dr. Kristen? Unmute yourself and say hello to everybody. Yes, I'm here. Hey! Hello. Uh, I totally love seeing this. I mean, this is this is doable by anybody. As long as you follow the principles of that clinical epigenetics, this will happen. Is that correct, Dr. Kristen? Yes, it is. It's uh it's been very, very rewarding. And will you, will you share with everybody how long you've been doing this and what the result has been, please? I've been doing this seven or eight years now. I'm the good news is I'm losing track and it just keeps gaining momentum. And um, I I ran some numbers just for last year and we did 97 um, gel di 3D gel diagnostic consults. Um, we treated 47 adults and we treated 15 children. So um, we're averaging five to 10 cases a month. Yeah. And and my favorite people to treat are the ones in pain because yeah. you get immediate relief. Don't get sucked into the OSA cases. Right. This takes a long time and they're at the bottom of the downhill slide. 
they have limited ability to come back. Pain cases, is mom very quickly, as soon as they can sleep, the mood improves. Is that your experience? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially the ones that say they have migraines and headaches within anywhere from a week to a month, they're, they almost always report no more headaches. Yeah. Great. We also have in our uh, audience, Dr. Susan Kane. Hello, Dr. Susan. Are you there? You can unmute yourself. Let's see. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, thank you for joining us from your car. That's I know. <laughs> that's commitment. That's I, effort, right? <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, I've I uh started about a year ago treating patients. My biggest achievement though is treating myself. But <laughs> this is Dr. This but is Dr. I, Kane speaking, okay? The first case I showed you. Yeah. But go I ahead. will say that. Yeah, no, I have had a lot of um, kids between the ages of 9 and 11, 9 and 14, and those have been my um, really rewarding cases because they report to me just amazing um, results in their schoolwork and their friendships and their achievements, and um, more than anything, their um you know, they're sleeping better. Their parents say that they don't wake up grumpy. And, um, but for me, I had a lot of hip pain, not unlike your other patient. And I was not able to, at the end of my work day, walk my dogs um, where I wanted to. Like I couldn't go up and down stairs and I couldn't walk them long distances. And I no longer have that problem. My whole goal in coming to you for training was to really, uh, address my impaired mouth and I will say that I've healed incredibly because I have full um, a full life I go hiking I travel I take my dogs on long walks that I couldn't do before two years ago I couldn't do it so it's really opened up my um, my personal well-being as well as being able to have I, I think that all of my patients have bought into treatment I don't think there's been one consultation I've done where they have said no. So you have a hundred percent acceptance rate. Hundred percent, yeah. 100%. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So how how do your patients take to this? I mean, other than saying, yeah, I want to buy this. What's their reaction been? Just so that everybody here could kind of gain well, a well, they, they come uh through my oral uh myofunctional therapist. Yeah. who basically they've been working with them on their tongue tie and they basically say you know um we really can't do much can't help you much more unless you expand and you know uh talk to dr kane well that's just initially how they come to me but um the biggest benefit is when they talk to me about their overall body pain and their midlines are off and all the other types of tmj symptoms and um, when I show them videos similar to the one that you showed on the, the doctor in uh, England or um, a couple of my and my sharing my own experience, I find that they are so ready for treatment. They just they just want help. They just want somebody to recognize that they, they have a problem it. and it can be treated. And is that your experience too, Dr. Kristen? Well, I guess she's jumped off. Okay. So it's past our bedtime, and we appreciate her for joining us and share uh, her experience. So the part I like about this is also that uh, all this work is done outside the mouth. The only time I reach in the mouth is the delivery of this. All right. So there's no shots, no drill, no bending over the patient. All right. This changes your personal physiology. And aches and pains. This is my overhead. Don't tell Home Depot that I buy my dental tools there, okay? That's it. So let me bring this to a close by addressing the tongue, okay? Uh, the tongue is the big O in OSA, the big obstruct. Okay. 
this tongue, I don't care how much you expand the jaw, it's not going to fit because it's pathological. It's a hypothyroid. And in AMD training, we go into why hypothyroid is so important. We don't have the time to go into this thing now, except that you need to know one thing. Your immunity will go down and your inflammation is going to go up when your body temperature goes down one degree centigrade from 98.6 Fahrenheit to 96.8 Fahrenheit. All right, one degree centigrade, you will lose 36% of your immune function and 50% of your enzyme activities. That means what? Immunity goes down, inflammation goes up. All right, so you have hypothyroid tongue every week in your practice. Every one of my patients, when I shake in with them, my hand is a thermometer checking out their hand temperature. She was ice cold. And sure enough, she has a big tongue, the outside, choked the airway. And guess what? She has the hypothyroid body shape. And it's frustrating because they can't lose weight if they cannot sleep. And perimenopausal women need the greatest help. They're the one who access the healthcare system the most. And so in our AMD training, we will coach you on some of these issues to help you know your patients. Uh, perimenopausal women, you know, it's a rough, rough stage to go through. And before and after, it may be the same body, but it's two biological entities. And part of the uh, uh, sleep issue and pain issue has to do with thyroid energy. There's another fellow dentist, gorgeous teeth, miserable owner. He's got impaired mouth undiagnosed. Okay, she. Fitness doesn't have anything to do with the exam pain. Impaired mouth absolutely does. This is her airway. Her partner, clinical partner, um, they practice together, um, sat in class, and when she saw this, uh, this uh, slide on uh, menopause and hypothyroidism, uh, she uh, she got a light bulb go off in her head and she said, hey, we should put Emily on this uh, treatment to open up her airway. And of course, with that goes the bone building diet and sure enough, she became a mom. And underneath this uh, jacket, she was pumping her milk while she sat in my class. And so they documented her airway increase in six months during which she became pregnant and she could not before or could not keep the uh, new fetus. Um, she gained 2.3X her airway volume and 2.7X her minimal cross section. And this is priceless, happy ending, right? She finally got to start a family and have a healthy baby boy. So by the time a man gets sent for sleep tests, just about two thirds of them have already erectile dysfunction, right? So erectile dysfunction has nothing to do with that little poop pill, okay? It's not a, it's a circulatory issue. It's not a hormone issue, okay? So most cases of ED recognizes a vascular etiology. And I would add that this vascular etiology has a oral contribution, right, to hypoxia and sleep fragmentation from the impaired mouth. Right? This is one of my patients. Hi, I'm, I'm Sean, and I give Dr. Leal permission to use this for educational purposes. <laughs> 
as you can see here, we've maxed out with the top. Okay. And uh, we're getting a getting a, a new one. I, and I, I, I've been you know, treated with the appliance since October of 17. So that, that's 11 months or so. Yes, months or roughly. Time. Yeah, rough, roughly 11 months. I got it uh, early in October last year. And I wanted to report one benefit, which is uh, it's it's had a beneficial erectile effect. I had, most notably, I wake up a lot at night with nocturnal erections, which is something that rarely, if ever, happened before I started using the device. But it happens frequently now, and sometimes multiple times in a night. If I wake up multiple times, I'm set. One of the benefits, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised, and I I wonder maybe if they're advertising the wrong things during football games. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yes. What if, okay, so we documented that her air, his airway went from 123 minimum cross sectional area to 226. That's exactly two x increase in her, in his minimal cross sectional area. When you do that. ED will come back naturally. You do not need to depend on whatever supplements or drugs. So this is a called a totem pole higher archaeos survival reflexes. What's most important to survive? Breathing, eating, vision, hearing, turning the head so you can hunt and eat, and digestion, reproduction, and locomotion. Guess who's on the very top of this totem pole? It's us. We just didn't know. That's where we belong. All right, so these are all the symptoms that my patients have told me as having improved after starting the treatment as I described to you. It was my own case. I used to be in trouble. Didn't know. I breast. Uh, I was a class two because my maxilla was not ready. Huh? My airway volume was 13.1 cc with a red and black end of the scale being not uh, my chosen. Okay. So this is like four times the uh, minimal cross sectional area increase. Uh, and uh, uh, my airway volume more than double. Okay. So this is how you are going to head off killer diseases that's going to sink your health. Now, I know a lot of patients, a lot of you doctors uh, would ask, well, don't, uh, you can't do that in adults. You cannot grow jaws. You cannot grow airway. All you do is tip teeth. Yeah, you will be tipping teeth you're a trinket dentist who traffic in appliances and you don't know whole health and you do not know um, epigenetics, all right? We don't have time, I've already run over and I wanna give you as much information as I can. So the one short answer is, this is a mechanical approach, relying on appliances alone. You can't do that, okay? And in class, we will teach you why and how to avoid it. But I'll show you my cases, okay, to close. This patient wanted to kill herself during the pandemic. This is her teeth. 28 months later, she looks like this. This is her same teeth. Do you see any posterior tipping? You see changes in the facial affect and vitality. Okay. So don't do bicuspid extraction, please. Don't just think about yourself as a dealer in dental trinkets. Think about how else you can elevate your game and restore a patient's mouth, airway, sleep, and alignment. This is what the end result looks like. We over expand and then let the teeth settle on their own. I'll have more cases. Don't jump to the conclusion with one slide. Okay. Look at the posterior. Not settled already. 
And none of this happens without a bone building diet that could grow the maxilla in combination with the appliance and uh, improves nasal breathing because this will shrink nasal congestion. So the airway corridor increases in the nasal tunnel. You can raise beautiful children with this. Uh, I love my job because all the women come back with facial radiance, right? Here's an example. It's a lawyer, she went from the left to the right. Two years, two and a half years. In between, she had a baby. You're not supposed to look more beautiful after you had a baby. But she did. Okay, that's pre-treatment. This is at the end of phase one treatment. No braces. Next case, same lady in this slide. Left is pre-treatment, right is two and a half years later. No braces. She too had a baby in between. Okay. Look at her posterior teeth. They're not picked out properly. So, airway mouth doctor is a new breed of airway dentist. You know, train in diagnosis of impaired mouth syndrome. We understand how clinical epigenetics works to grow a fully potentiated maxilla. They lip seal because they can breathe through the nose, the absence of tongue time. So an AMD is all of these. Upper airway diagnostician, we're in charge of all four joints. You're an expert in impaired mouth, and you're a cranial facial architect. You're cross training full body or integrative health. And you are unrivaled wellness research. All of these things are now starting to show up in uh, journal articles now. I'm writing case reports to help educate dentists. This New one that's coming out in the, uh, next week, actually, uh, is on clinical epigenetics. Improve or resolve perplexing resistant symptoms. Right. So the cases published here is not even presented tonight because we didn't have the doctor. But I want to thank you for your attention and I want to offer you these two mini books, they have 90 pages each. Pick it up, read it yourself, give it to your patient, and they'll want treatment because they want to buy solutions to their problem that no one else can solve. This is a different topic for another seminar, but I want you to give you a sneak peek. This is my granddaughter, Camilla. We are growing her according to what I wrote in this book. She's kind of like my poster child. You don't need an appliance to grow a child. You do need a holistic mouth that can support alignment, breathing, circulation, digestion, energy, and sleep. With that, they will fly. They get patients like this every day. Only you, as an AMD, can help them. Make the diagnosis, offer the treatment. So the rope forks here, right? So we now have a new career possibility as an unrivaled healer. Restore the impaired mouth, airway, sleep, alignment, access. Or you can stay, stay as a restored dentist if you're happy to. But I love my job because all the women come back looking more beautiful and there's no pain, no drills, no shots, no surgery, no drugs. Patients love it. So here's my invitation. We have a Valentine super special. Uh, our training is four hands-on seminars over six to 12 months. I guess I have enough room to break this in. Okay, so um, we asked 
you to bring three cases or uh, more because three cases are mentored. So that means that at eight to twelve thousand dollars each, you'll more than make your tuition back. You'll make a whole lot more, up to ten x, depending on how diligent you are and whether you bring an airway treatment or not. The acceptance rate goes from sixty percent to a hundred percent. Your pick. How hard you want to work at this, and another time we'll talk about how to deliver your child best face clinic. So with that, I'm gonna close my presentation and thank you for your attention and attendance. Uh, if you want to reach me, uh, my contact information is here. And if you want to register, here's the phone. So take a screenshot or write that down and feel free to reach out. I'm here for you whenever you're ready.